This paper is about web compression. I, I just have to mention first that I'm not here as a Yahoo speaker. This, this specific work is part of my PhD that I did before joining Yahoo. So this is a joint work with my advisor, uh, Yuval from the Technion. We are both from Israel. Long way to come here. So did any, any of you ever used HTTP compression? Raise your hand if you're running HTTP compression. OK, that's almost everybody. So HTTP compression is something pretty simple. You just have to run your, when you run your own web server, you just have to basically turn it on. It's, it's already there for many, many years. We are talking about compressing HTML, just to make it clear, not about photos and videos that are more static. They sit on the web server already, and they are compressed with their own techniques. Here we are talking about on-the-fly compression of HTML content or anything else which is content uh, based on text, like, say, like JavaScript and similar things. So who is using HTTP compression? Almost everybody, almost all the websites in the world. We analyzed the top 500 from uh, Alexa list, and we found that 92% of the web servers are actually running gzip compression, which is the most popular one. Uh, the average HTML is about 100 kilobytes. The, we are talking about the main pages of all those sites. And they are usually compressed to about 5 to 1 ratio, meaning saving about 80% of the bandwidth just by running kind of gzip compression to the HTML. So how do you run it? You just have to turn on to enable HTTP compression. But what we are going to talk about is this compression level, this mysterious number between one and nine that you can change. So again, raise your hand if you ever change the level of HTTP compression in anything you do running a web server. OK, that's good, because these were actually our findings, that we interview many IT managers that are actually running compression in different environments. And nobody ever tried to even set the level, meaning they are all using level six of compression. This is the default. Also for the command line utility that you can run, gzip and some file name, same thing. They are all based on zlib. Zlib is a library below. The default is level six. So this is also what we found with the top 500 sites. Over 50% of the sites are running here, level six. Again, nobody is looking into the details, trying to do something different. Is it good? Is it bad? I don't know. It depends on so many things. So we decided to check some more stuff. So first, why do you want to change the level? Because higher compression levels just get a better ratio. They can save space. Here you can see that this is the average, again, to all those 500 sites. If you move from level 6 to 7, 8, or 9, you actually gain almost nothing. But the lower levels are actually much worse than using level 6. You can lose some of the bandwidth uh, if you're losing the lower levels. But if you're using the higher levels, like level 6, the level 6 here, you can see that you can serve less concurrent users on your site. It takes more CPU, naturally. And also, one more minor thing is that the latency, the time it takes to get the first byte of the HTML, the latency is a bit higher. So here you can see the absolute numbers. It's not really frightening because it takes about 2 milliseconds to compress this 100 kilobytes or 120 kilobytes page. But you pay at least 2 milliseconds more, even if your, your machine is completely free, not busy with anything else, two extra milliseconds if you move to level six, which is, again, the default, the most popular level. And one, one of the things that we checked is, are all the websites in the world are the same? Can we actually recommend someone to use a specific compression level, move from six to five or to seven? Uh, naturally, the answer is no, because it depends on what exactly is written in the HTML. You can see here the differences between the worst and the best content for compression, meaning we call it compressibility, for each level. So again, the 500 sites, 
If you're using level one, some sites may be, here you can see the green mark, this is, this is the good part, some sites are able to compress the content really, really fast. We tested the content on our machines, of course, but as you can see, the difference between the, the worst uh, here on the, on the bottom and here, the best up here, is like three times slower for some content. As you can see the average here in blue. So it depends on the content so much that in some cases, like here, the, the best for level nine here on the right is actually as fast as the worst with level one. And here, this is the tricky part. We found that if your content is highly compressible, meaning that you can reduce like 90% of the bandwidth here, you can see here, those are the really, really fast to compress contents, okay? HTMLs that compress really, really fast, and also they compress well. So as you can see, it's actually the same thing. If it compresses, it's highly compressible, it's also fast, and you can see here like 10 to 1 ratio. But if your content is not really compressible, here you can see like 3 to 1 ratio. We save 70% of the bandwidth. It also takes a lot of time to do that. So you pay with what we call milliseconds to save a megabyte. So you have to pay more for content that is not compressible. So this is something that we didn't continue with in the current work, but we already submitted another paper where we try to combine all kinds of pages. If you have a web server running 10 or maybe 100 different pages, they're all dynamic, but they have different nature, different compressibility level, then you have to run a um, really sophisticated solution and maybe you have to compress one, some of the content with level three and some with level seven. It depends on, again, on the content, on the CPU. So the, the factors are many. You have to consider before you pick the compression level, you have to consider so many things that it also, it's actually a, an impossible mission. Because some of the things like the content, you may be able to predict. And maybe even the demand, although at nights, naturally, the, uh, the demand is pretty low and you have the high times around, it doesn't really matter what you run, it's actually around seven or eight in the evening. Uh, maybe you can predict it and you can play with a compression level, but something like hardware or hosting costs, they vary a lot and you cannot really play and restart your web server every time you want to make a change. And we found that in reality, all the servers like the uh, Apache, IIS, and Nginx, they all, have, they all support GZIP, but if you want to set the compression level, if you change the level, it, it works for every, all the content you have on the server, and you even have to restart your machine. So with Apache, for example, you can set level five, and then you have to restart it. So if you want to change it in the evening or in the morning, you have to restart your machine. So it's, it's very basic right now. So what we did, we offered two solutions. They are both free and available in my website. It's mentioned here. The first solution is to take the mod deflate. It's, it's a, a model that is responsible for the deflate compression, which is the name of the GZIP compression. It's a bit confusing, but this is how it works. What we did is that instead of reading the static level from the configuration, this modified model, it's mod mod, is actually reading it from a separate process, internal process that calculates how much free CPU you have. So we can automatically, if the CPU demand is high, it can autom automatically drop the compression level to one or two or three, whatever is needed, and then compress everything correctly. And if you have more CPU available, you can use level nine, save the extra one, two, three, or 25% of your bandwidth. The second solution is a bit simpler. It's a PHP code that all it does is it reads, uh, the, again, the compression level from a, a, a separate process that we run in the background, and then it uses it instead of reading the static level, it does it uh, at the end of your PHP code. It can easily adapt it to any other language you're using. 
Uh, another thing we introduce in the paper is the notion of mix. Mix is something we do when we want to compress in level one or two, and we are not sure if we can make it to level two. Maybe level two is too much for the available CPU at the moment, and we want to use something like one and a half, because these are like random presets that the Zlib offer you, but one and a half in our case means that we serve some of uh, the users with level one and some with level two. In this case, we show that 1.2 means 80% of the users will get the content compressed in level one. This way we can move in baby steps, like every 10 seconds we change the level by 0.2. So we can, it's all about trial and error, so we can try different levels and see what it makes to the CPU. Now we'll see here two uh, experiments. We go briefly over the details. Uh, in this experiment, we use the load balancer to give more, uh, more requests to specific server that we equip with our uh, Elastic solution. So what we did, we gave this Elastic uh, equipped server 1.5 more users. So what it did during the day, this is a real traffic, 24 hours uh, traffic, is that the Elastic solution is using level nine and eight during the day, and only here at peak time in the evening, it reduces the compression level maybe even as low as level one, and then it can easily cope with the higher demand. This way you can save a lot of money, if it's, especially if it's your own hardware or if you're using any kind of cloud that doesn't really allow you to use more and less servers during the day. Uh, it's usually pretty complicated to do it anyway. Uh, second case is a denial of service attack that we here emulate by giving here, uh, again, a specific server. We give 70% uh, 70 more, uh, 70 more requests to a specific server. Here, this is a five minutes uh, attack. And our elastic solution here, what it does is instead of using level six all day, like the standard solution does, it uses the elastic uh, level, which is between eight and nine. And then here, when the attack starts, it senses that the CPU goes much higher. So it reduces the level down to level one. And then when we attack, uh, the attack is over, it goes back to level seven, eight, nine, according to the CPU and demand. As you can see here on the CPU chart, uh, the standard solution actually crashes because you get to 100% CPU and the latency goes to infinity here. This is the latency why, while the latency in the Elastic solution uh, adds only about, I think it was about 20 milliseconds during the attack and then back to normal. That's it. I had only 10 minutes, so it was like a teaser to the paper and I hope you enjoy it and Feel free to ask any question by email. I don't know if we have time now. One question. Okay, more time to the next speaker.